Thank you for the introduction. I'm going to talk about uh, compact structure preserving signatures with almost tight security. This is a joint work with Masayuki Abe, Dennis Hohainz, Mia Kokubo, and Jashin Pham. Uh, in this uh, uh, work, uh, we propose a new structure preserving signature. I call uh, this SPS for short. And this is based on symmetric external Diffie Hellman assumption, and which satisfies two properties. The first is almost tight security, and uh, the, our scheme achieves constant size signature and the public key. Uh, let's see the detail of this work from the next slide. So, what is the structure preserving cryptography? This is a framework for efficient generic constructions using bilinear groups for building blocks. Uh, this is compatible with gross high non-interactive proof system uh, based on bilinear groups. So uh, it is easy to combine with uh, uh, gross high proof system so we can construct many, many applications. For example, blind signatures, group signatures, anonymous credentials, and more. Uh, plus, uh, we can, uh, it is easy to, uh, ah, sorry, uh, structure preserving cryptography enables us uh, uh, to construct uh, public, uh, so, uh, cryptographic protocols in a modular way. So it's a very useful uh, tool. In this talk, we focus on signature. So I, uh, I'm explaining what is a structure preserving signature, SPS. Uh, in SPS, all public objects uh, consist of elements in groups. Uh, sorry. Uh, some, uh, and uh, I. So uh, message, verification key, and signature, uh, all are group elements. Uh, plus, uh, in SPS, uh, verification is done by computing pairing product equation, like uh, this equation. Uh, this is uh, SPS. Uh, these two properties is for gross high proof system. Uh, I mean, uh, it is easy to combine with gross high proof system, so SPS is very useful uh, to construct, uh, for example, blind signatures or group signatures, something like that. So now, uh, let's uh, move to the de de definition of tight security. Uh, to prove the security of cryptography, we use some hard problem. Uh, we assume there exists a, a problem uh, for, uh, it's hard, to, hard for adversaries to solve a problem uh, whose, running, uh, whose success property is epsilon p and the running time is tp. Then we can construct a secure cryptography uh, against adversaries whose success property is epsilon and the running time is t. Uh, typically, uh, in the reduction to prove the security, uh, Challenger is given a problem instance and simulate a verification key and send it to the adversary. And the adversary send a message M sub i and the challenger respond with a valid signature, sigma i, and this process is repeated many times. And finally, the adversary output a target message M star and a forged signature, sigma star. Then the challenger output uh, and solution uh, to a hard problem. Here, we define the reduction cost as follows. The re reduction cost is epsilon over epsilon p times tp over t. So what is tight security? Uh, here, I mean the tight security is, uh, is uh, the reduction cost is uh, just constant. So it's independent of security parameters or the number of queries. And uh, almost tight the security means the reduction cost is order of security parameter. Here, here lambda is security parameter, or order of uh, log of the number of queries. Uh, this is almost tight security. So in this talk, uh, we, we achieved uh, almost tight security, so our reduction cost is order of security parameter. However, uh, the reduction cost of many cryptographic schemes uh, is uh, order of the number of queries. Uh, actually, this is not good. Why? Why tight security is important, uh, in particular for SPS? Uh, if we achieve tight security, then we can use shorter security parameters. So I mean, uh, if we use non-tightly secure schemes, uh, the reduction uh, 
security loss is uh, around the order of 2 to the 30, so we need to use longer security parameter to achieve uh, uh, standard security level, for example, 80-bit uh, security. And uh, generally speaking, it is very difficult to find the best parameter setting, so uh, tight security is preferable. Moreover, in structure preserving cryptography, demand for tight security is uh, much stronger because if we increase security parameter for one of building blocks in structure preserving crypto, then uh, we need increase security parameter of other building blocks too, because uh, all other building blocks use the same binary groups. So uh, in security project preserving crypto, uh, tight security is preferable, okay? Here is a comparison of SPS. Um, Hofheinz and Yerga proposed a uh, tightly secure SPS based on DNA assumption. However, their scheme is a tree-based signature, so to generate two to the D signatures, uh, their signature size is 10, 10 times D plus six. So this is not constant size signature. After that, many constant size structure preserving signature based on standard assumption had been proposed. However, none of them are not tightly secure. So they are reduction cost uh, order of Q or order of Q, Q square or order of Q log Q. Uh, our SPS scheme achieved uh, a constant size signature and public key and uh, almost tightly secure. And this is the first scheme okay. and based on uh, standard uh, symmetric external diffie Hellman assumption. Okay, so now let's move to uh, data detail of our scheme and the proof idea. So for non-structure preserving cryptography, uh, there is a very uh, powerful framework to achieve almost tight security. Uh, this is, uh, it is a chain wave framework proposed at the Crypto 2013. In their framework, uh, the core technique is partitioning by bits. So I, I'm going to explain briefly this uh, technique. In the framework, we somehow increase the entropy of secret key X. To achieve this, we gradually change the signature in the simulation. Here, signature is the following form. Signature is uh, a secret key times some function H of message. Actually, uh, chain wave framework is uh, uh, basically applicable to identity-based encryption. However, uh, in this talk, I focus on uh, signature case. Okay. So uh, to gradually change uh, signature, uh, we define uh, many hybrid games. So at the case hybrid game, oh, oops. so if case bit of message M is equal to case bit of target message M star, then nothing is changed. However, if case bit of M is not equal to case bit of target message M star, then we slightly change a signature uh, like this. Uh, signature is X time uh, here, if K prime is some independent and random function, uh, takes uh, K bit pre pre prefix of message M. And a signature is X times F K prime of K bit prefix of message M and times H of M. Here, we can insert more entropy by using this independent and random function. And so, after lambda hybrid games, we can uh, arrive at the last hybrid game where all signatures are randomized by independent and random function. So, at the last hybrid game, X is unpredictable for adversary. So it is, we can show that it is difficult for adversary to output a buried signature. So this is a, a rough idea of chain wave framework. So we, somehow we would like to mimic this framework in structure preserving uh, signature. However, there is a serious problem uh, in this frame, uh, to, to uh, apply this framework in SPS because in the chain wave framework, uh, they use a bit by bit technique in an essential way. So, uh, however, 
uh, in structure preserving signature, all, pop, uh, all elements are in group, uh, group elements, so we cannot use bit by bit technique. This is a, a serious problem. So let's, uh, from the next slide, uh, I explain how to overcome this uh, uh, problem in, this, uh, in our work. So basic, uh, here is a basic design idea of our scheme, uh, our signature scheme. A signature is, uh, uh, consists of encryption of secret key X and uh, no interactive zero knowledge proof for consistency. So a signature includes a cipher text of X and NISC proof law, and uh, a verification key includes some values C. And here, uh, this proof law proves that, prove or the or st statement. Or st statement uh, is like this. The cipher text is an encryption of secret key X, and C is a commitment of X. Or uh, some uh, trap the witness uh, for partitioning. So I will soon explain what kind of trap the witness uh, uh, used in our scheme. Uh, this is the uh, uh, basic design of our scheme. Here, we use Elgamar encryption for the cypertext because Elgamar encryption is structure preserving and tightly uh, secure uh, to, to, um, under SXDH assumption. And we use a gross high commitment scheme. This is also structure preserving crypto and uh, tightly secure under SXE assumption. Okay? So here is, there are two problems uh, to achieve uh, almost tight secure SPS. The first, uh, how to bind a message in a group into a message. So th he, in this uh, idea, there is no message. So what the, how to, uh, bind a message in a uh, signature. A second problem, what kind of uh, trap door uh, should we use for partitioning and to achieve uh, almost tight security? Okay, let's uh, see how to bind a message uh, in, into a signature. We use encrypted, encrypted one-time mark to achieve this. Here, X0 is a randomly chosen value from ZP, and X1 is equal to zero. A verification key includes a commitment of X0 and X1. Uh, there are uh, uh, many other values, but uh, we focus on uh, these two commitments uh, in this slide. A signature includes a ciphertext of G to the G0 and uh, NISC proof low mark. What is low mark? This prove that G to the G0 is equal to G to the X0 times M to the X1. What does this equation mean? Uh, if we focus on the exponent of this equation, uh, G0 is kind of one-time mark for a uh, message. Okay. So, uh, so we would like to somehow we use uh, uh, the security of one-time mark to prove the security of our SPS scheme. Uh, to achieve this, uh, we, we would like to achieve uh, the, this, these two uh, requirements. First, somehow we show that uh, signatures given the signing oracle are useless for adversaries. If we can achieve this, we can force the adversary to reuse encrypted one-time mark, so uh, we can uh, reduce the security of signature to, to one-time mark. Okay. So uh, the, here is the problem. Uh, how to achieve uh, the first uh, property? So how to make uh, signatures useless for adversaries? Okay. Uh, we use uh, uh, some extended technique uh, of uh, chain wave framework. Uh, here is uh, somehow we insert more entropy for Z0 and, uh, uh, by partitioning and achieve almost tight security. So uh, let's move to the technique uh, to achieve uh, almost tight security. To achieve uh, tight security, we use uh, OR proof technique. This is an extension of adaptive partitioning technique proposed by Dennis Hoffines at the last uh, Eurocrypt. Here, we introduced another value, x2. x2 is equal to zero, and uh, 
a ver the verification key includes the commitment of X2 and the different series from the, from the commitment of X0 and X1. I omit uh, uh, other barriers uh, in this slide, uh, just uh, we, I would like to focus on the partitioning technique. A signature includes the ciphertext of G2D G0 and G2D G1 and G2D G2 and uh, a NISC proof, uh, low OR. What is low OR? Low OR proves that G0 minus G1 times X2 minus G2 is equal to zero. What does this equation mean? Uh, this is kind of uh, or statement because if uh, G0 equal, G, equal to G1, then uh, this equation holds. So this, the, uh, the, the first part is kind of now I and double encryption technique. Uh, this proves the consistency of the uh, two cipher text. Okay. So the, and uh, if X2 equal to G2, then uh, the equation also holds. So what does it mean? Uh, this is just for uh, adaptive partitioning technique. So I'm going to explain this uh, uh, more detail uh, from the next slide. Uh, this uh, uh, latter statement, uh, last latter condition is uh, to achieve uh, adaptive partitioning. So uh, rough idea is as follows. If can correctly guess G2 star output by the adversary, then we can force uh, X2 is not equal to G2 star for adversary. So the adversary must use the first condition. I mean, G0 is, is equal to G1. So the adversary must use consist, consistent ciphertext. So the, uh, the OAuth statement is uh, for this. Uh, Okay, so now uh, I briefly explain the proof outline for partitioning part. So I, I, I omit the uh, uh, other part, uh, other than partitioning part. Uh, so uh, our, in our SPS scheme, a verification key includes commitment of X0 and X1 under CRS0, and the commitment X2 under, under CRS, CRS1. Here, X2 is equal to zero, and the signature includes ciphertext of G2, G0, G2, G1, and G2, G2. And uh, there are two non-interactive zero knowledge proofs. In the partitioning part, only low OR is important. So uh, I focus on low OR. Low OR proves that uh, this uh, equation. Uh, first, uh, the simulator gets uh, G2 star output by the adversary. Uh, I define uh, this as better. And we switch the CRS1 from binding mode to hiding mode. There are, so in the gross high proof system, there are two modes, hiding and binding mode. So first we change the CRS1 to hiding mode so we can uh, change value X2 from, z from zero to one minus beta. Okay. Because we uh, use uh, the hiding mode now. Next, we use the security of uh, uh, public encryption under PK2, and we change G2 from zero to case bit of mu. Uh, what is mu? Mu is a random binary encoding of message M. So we consider SPS, so a message is a group element. However, uh, in this, uh, this random binary encoding, does not appear in the scheme, in the real world. So uh, this is uh, only for the security proof. So we can use uh, uh, random binary encoding for, uh, for the simulation. And uh, here, G2 is defined as case bit of random encoding mu. So uh, we use the security of uh, in the CPA of PK, under PK2. So we can now use the decryption key of PK2 so we check G2 uh, star by, decryption, by decrypting the ciphertext under PK2. So we can check whether uh, the guess is correct or not. If the guess is not correct, we abort. This is just probably one over, one, one over two. So now uh, we uh, move to randomization uh, by partitioning. So if 
G2 star is equal to k bit of mu, then nothing is changed, like chain with framework. So G0 is equal to G1, and uh, this is a uh, uh, random value from the previous hybrid game. However, if G2 star is not equal to k bit of mu, then we can change the contents of ciphertext under PK1, because if this condition hold, uh, we, X2 is defined by one minus beta. So uh, in this case, X2 is equal to Z2 by the simulation. So we do not need to satisfy the first condition. I mean, we do not satisfy Z0 is equal to Z1. So we can uh, safely change the contents of uh, a ciphertext under PK1 from uh, uh, previous value to, to the new uh, random value. Uh, we use uh, independent random function f prime uh, and it takes uh, k bit prefix of mu. So now uh, G0 is not equal to Z1 and we can insert more entropy to Z1. So now and uh, move to uh, uh, next step. Uh, to check the validity of uh, forgery of the adversary, we need to check the contents of uh, ciphertext to whether uh, uh, whether uh, mark is valid or not. So we need to decrypt uh, ciphertext under uh, PK1. Uh, now we already uh, changed the contents of uh, ciphertext under PK1, so we, now we can use the decryption key of PK1. So we now check by Z1 star by decryption. Okay. So next, we can uh, change the contents of ciphertext under PK0. Now, uh, in a similar way, we change the contents of ciphertext under PK0 from uh, uh, previous value to the uh, independent and random function. Uh, so now, uh, again, we uh, can satisfy Z0 and equal to Z1. So we can uh, partition uh, the set of signature by uh, using this technique, and we can repeat these processes. So uh, at the last hybrid game, all signature has a sufficient entropy, uh, and uh, all signatures are useless for the adversaries, and uh, adversary, the adversary must, use, uh, must reuse some signature from given signatures by the signing oracle. Uh, so uh, this uh, contract contradict to the one-time security of Mac. Uh, this is an uh, outline of proof. Uh, let's summarize of this talk. Uh, we propose new structure preserving signature based on SXDH assumption, uh, which satisfies all most of type security and constant size signature and public key. To achieve this, we introduce a new adaptive partitioning technique for structure preserving cryptography based on gross high proof system. Uh, it seems that our scheme is uh, not super efficient because uh, signature consists of uh, 12, uh, 25 or 28 uh, group elements. But if we use the best parameter setting, actually our scheme uh, uh, very efficient uh, compared with previous uh, uh, SPS schemes. Uh, and uh, there is a, uh, uh, so one open question is uh, how, uh, whether we can construct a more efficient uh, uh, tightly secure SPS or structure preserving cryptography. Okay. That's it. Thank you.